Hello everybody. Uh, this is a Iowa Walkman from 1983. It's an HS PO2 uh, Mark II. I did have a PO2 original. It was a little bit different style. But the Mark II came out later. The PO2 was uh, 82. Uh, and the PO3 came out later. Which is this one, 83. So 82 for the PO2. I think it was 81, 82 if I remember right. It's been too long, but it, this came out in 83. This is all original. It's in excellent condition. It's amazing how flashy these were. What's even more amazing though is that how well that this this one here has survived all these years. They're pretty delicate. You know, they may be a mostly metal construction, but still you know, one drop and they're finished. This one still works good. Uh, I don't have any, I gotta dig out the cassettes to run to my speaker system. I still have cassettes somewhere. Uh, I'll just sort of look for them and then play. Play it and then you can get an idea. The sound quality is pretty decent. There is some wavering I noticed though on this. Uh, Flutter, yeah, that's right. Remember the old terms, flutter. Uh, that they were prone, you know, cassettes. Here's the old battery. I haven't looked in here in years. One of these I bought brand new in the 19 mid 80s. This one here. I'm not gonna force it. Take a look at it later. It's not that important. Just a the AAA battery case and it goes in there to two but yeah I've always liked these they're, they're flashy Come in, they came in different colors uh, I have one of the metallic gold and I remember metallic blue green browns Oh, there's a whole catalog of multiple different colors. And they all were incredible. In the original box of these came were also incredibly colorful. Bright yellow. In case some of you guys remember, that was the original color. It's bright yellow for the box. And let me see how close I can get this thing to the camera without seeing an idea. This thing is really flashy and the all the chrome and and boy this thing is glossy that and this uh, brushed aluminum I don't know if you can see it on the camera I have to tilt it at a right angle and you can see it Yeah, they definitely don't make them like this anymore. I can tell you that much. Iowa doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, it was a subsidiary of Sony for a while. And they just lost their mojo like so many other companies. And that was it. And here's the case that it came with when, when new. And I actually still have the original headphones for it somewhere. I have no clue where the hell I put And the, the, back, the back clip somewhere. And this is the case. I remember when this was brand new. How many years ago was that? Over 30 years ago. It was completely flat and you had to fold it and put the little tabs in there. It was in a little plastic bag. And it was completely laid out flat. And you just popped it open and put the little tabs in there. And away you went. Hmm. Interesting. And now. Uh, here is one I picked up out of in Honolulu. This is the Japanese market version. Same thing. This one has, I believe, yeah, this one has a uh, recording. There's your recording jack. And this is the model I've never seen in the United States. HS F7. F7. And a lot of writing is in Japanese. I don't know if you can actually see it. And you know, 
This one they call a guess that boy. That's I don't know if I need a script on the top. That's all in English. Sometimes Japanese products will have uh, for market will have Japanese uh, writing, but it does have it on the on the base here. This one the same way. I don't like forcing these battery covers. They're old now. This one's in good shape. It's not as nice as the other one. It has a few you know, down here. There's a little bit of a, a little damage, but it's in pretty decent shape. And again, it's all metal. Metal inside there. I guess to keep it thin. They, instead of using thick plastic, they just made it out of uh, stamped aluminum. And you got the brushed uh, uh, anodized uh, red aluminum finish. Pretty ruby red color. And I think, yeah, this is in Japanese writing too. But this was, was a Japanese student who went to Honolulu and was using it to record the classes. When he was done, Instead of bringing it back with them, he just uh, sold that the uh, flea market that they have in Honolulu. But there's also a nice unit. And this one here. This is one I've I also bought brand new in uh, 1985, I believe. This is the HS F07. This one's a like a charcoal brushed aluminum, charcoal and chrome. I used this for when I was flying. I used to record conversations, so this thing has uh, seen a lot of service, but in brand new condition. Always been very careful with it. I think the label here must have faded away or peeled off, and something happened to it. The base label is still there. Mm -hmm. There, that's your serial number tag. And a lot of these, uh, this one I had to replace the belt in. And I think oh, maybe about 10 years ago I replaced the belt in uh, probably the, the one the Japanese guys sold. This one here. Because uh, they do deteriorate and they disintegrate and the rubber becomes very gooey, nasty. So if you ever take one apart and you get it all over your hands, especially if it was in the tropics like this one. The, the heat and tends to attack the rubber and uh, starts to disintegrate. All right, well, I guess that's it for this video. When I get a cassette and, and hook it up to my stereo, I'll play it and you guys can hear what, what they sound like.